Thank you. My name is Rich DiGiacomo. I'm currently the president of the UB Law Alumni Association. I'd like to welcome all my fellow UB alum, brother and sister attorneys, and guests here tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for attending. We really need your support. I'd also like to thank all of our Law Alumni Association members for being members and supporting us. I know in these difficult times uh, in the economy, I appreciate your spending the funds to, uh, to attend tonight. I know when my firm talks about events like this, I usually say, okay, let's, let's support this, let's write the check, money talks. And they always look at me and say, yeah, Rich, money talks, but all ours usually says is goodbye. But like your firms, I, I appreciate you saying goodbye to a little of your money tonight and supporting us. So thank you for that. Um, it's critical to our law school that our alumni association supports the law school, and that really begins with all of us becoming members of the Law Alumni Association. I'd also like to point out that this is the law school's 125th anniversary. We're going to be having some celebrations. It's going to be starting on September the 28th at the newly renovated Hotel Lafayette. We're going to have a kickoff event, a kickoff affair for the 125th anniversary. And uh, uh, please mark your calendars. Um, before I turn it over to the dean, because I want to keep this program moving along tonight, I think I should introduce the, uh, the head table. Um, why don't I start uh, at our left? We have first Eileen Fleischman. Vice Dean of the Law School, Executive Director of the Law Alumni Association. <laughs> Next, Lori Syka -Bloom, Bloom, Ex President, Presenter of the Judiciary Award, Counsel Nixon Peabody, Graduate Class of 83. <laughs> Next, Jim Grable, Class of 96, Vice President of the Law Alumni Association. Presenter of the Community Service Award, partner in the firm of Connors and Villardo. <laughs> Next, Vince Doyle, class of 89, recipient of the Community Service Award, also a partner at Connors and Villardo. <laughs> Next, Mike Tahari, recipient of the Non Alumnus Award, and partner in the law firm of Tahari and Tadaro. Next, Dean and Sunny Distinguished Professor, our Dean, Macau Matua, presenter of the Private Practice Award. <laughs> Next, the guy that takes over for me, Class of 96, President-elect of the Law Alumni Association, President in another month, partner at the firm of Personius and Melber, Brian Melber. <laughs> to my right, Class of 1985, Jill Bond, recipient of the Business Award, Senior Vice President and General Counsel at Rick Products Corporation. <laughs> Next to Jill, Class of 98, Brian Gwitt, Presenter of the Business Award, Partner at Damon and Maury. <laughs> Next to Brian, the Honorable Cynthia M. Roof, Class of 77, recipient of the Judiciary Award, U.S. District Court Judge for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania. <laughs> Next to Judge Roof, Class of 84, William J. Hochul, Jr., recipient of the Public Service Award, U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Western New York. Next to Bill, Mark K. Susamoto, Class of 1982, recipient of the Private Practice Award, member of the Dean's Advisory Council, partner at Van Etten, Susamoto, and Suprell in Los Angeles, California. <laughs> Next to Mark at the end, Mary Pat Enright Fleming, Class of 85, presenter of the Public Service Award, assistant U.S. Attorney. Thank you. Again, thank you all for being here tonight. We've got a great group of people we're awarding, but I want to move it along. I'm going to introduce Dean McCalmatua. Thank you very much, Rich. Um, and thanks to all of you for coming out today. Uh, for me, this is one of the most important events of the year. It is one of those parties that I truly enjoy because I think uh, the gathering here represents the creme de la creme 
of the Western New York and the Buffalo legal community. It's also a time when we honor uh, our best and brightest. And to that end, I just want to say I am just awed by the, the cast of the prominent lawyers and attorneys that we are going to be honoring today. And I just want us to give them a hand right off the bat. There are many people in the audience, um, judges, uh, senior lawyers, politicians, uh, prominent members of our community. Uh, but I will be remiss if I do not mention the only congresswoman in the room, Kathy Hopper. Kathy? Um, let me just say that uh, four years ago, I stood here as a green home, as a new dean, and I made some promises. Uh, I hope that you will not be too harsh because of the promises I made. But what I said to you four years ago was that uh, we, as SUNY Buffalo Law School, were, were not content to be an okay law school. We were not content to be a good law school. We wanted to become a great law school. But I just want to say that before I made that promise, I did not um, contemplate what was coming my way. The Great Recession of course hit us and it is against the great recession I think that we must measure the things that we have accomplished. Uh, we were hit with what I would call turbulent headwinds but I said to you four years ago and I say to you again that this law school will not be victimized by small dreams no matter what the challenges are. We've risen to those challenges. We've, I think, overcome the headwinds, and we've accomplished things that I think were not thinkable just four years ago. Let me just highlight some of those things that we've accomplished. For one, we have hired 16 new faculty members. These are tenure track faculty members, the core of the faculty. And I believe that you've all received our magazines that uh, detail the character, the qualifications, and the experiences of these uh, new faculty members. We've done this in the last four years, and we've done it in the worst economic climate since the Great Depression. The 16 faculty members are fully one-third of our entire faculty. This is the deepest transformation of our faculty. I expect that these new faculty members will spearhead the renaissance of our law school. Secondly, I want to say that this year's class is one of the best. Uh, the median uh, uh, GPA is 3.57, and that is the highest in the history of the law school. Uh, the LSAT stands at 27. Uh, those two numbers make us very proud. I said when I became dean that I would improve the caliber of the body of our students, and we have done so. I also said that I was not very happy with the way our building looked and felt. I was not always very proud to come in through the front door of O'Brien, and you all know why. So I vowed that when I became dean, I would renovate and I would transform the law school's infrastructure. To that end, 
we have invested close to $3 million to renovate the law school building. If you come on the first floor, if you come to the first floor of our lobby, you will not recognize the place. And I, those who have been there know what I'm talking about. We have transformed the lobby. We have made it a livable space. Um, we have also installed infrastructure in the classrooms so that we are able to catch up with learning technologies in the 21st century. The classrooms, the biggest classrooms, 107, 106, and so on, are teched up. And you are able to connect uh, from those classrooms uh, with colleagues in Cape Town, South Africa, in Delhi, India, and other places. We have come of age in terms of technology. Uh, third, I also vow that I would reduce the gap between the bar and the bench and the law school. I felt that uh, there was always, perhaps not always, a very mutually beneficial relationship between the bar and the bench. And I felt it was my responsibility to bring all of us together. Because I believe law schools exist because the legal profession exists. And to that end, I have organized many uh, events with the bar and the bench, uh, with um, judges and lawyers, in which our faculty members have been able to come and speak to uh, the bar and the bench about the kinds of things that we are doing at the law school. Uh, just uh, as an example, the last event that we held uh, just a couple of weeks ago what was at Hatch and Rush, and I was very moved that close to 80 lawyers, about a quarter of them partners from Hatch and Rush, came to hear us speak about the law school. It was just a remarkable event. Um, so I just want to say that we are a law school on the move. But I want to also ask the question, what has, has made the difference? Why have we been able to do all these things that we've done? And I just want to point to two factors that I think are critical. Number one, I think the support of the then provost uh, of uh, UB, Satish Party as he then was provost and now is president, was critical. There was no way we could have managed to do the things I've talked about without the support. And I want to say the unflinching support of the then provost and now president Satish Tripathi. Secondly, I want to say that we could not have done what we've done without all of you. You are the difference makers. You are the change makers. When the state cut funding to the law school, when the state slashed our support to close to a quarter of what we need to operate, you all stepped up uh, to the plate to make a difference. I want to uh, reveal to you today a little secret that you can take home with you. But of course, uh, this secret cannot go outside this room. <laughs> we are in the middle of a campaign for the law school. About three years ago, I initiated a campaign for the law school in tandem with the campaign for the university. Uh, we set our goal for the campaign at 30 million dollars. This is the most aggressive campaign in the history of our law school, uh, three years ago. Um, I don't know whether I can review these secrets. Uh, the campaign people are in the building, uh, so they might uh, be upset. But I just want to say that you are the difference makers. Because in just three years, we've managed to raise half 
of that God. You must give yourself a hand. I also want to tell you that the last campaign that the law school had, which lasted seven years, raised $12 million. So in three years, we've been able to surpass that campaign. Our goal is $30 million. Obviously, I would like to blow past that goal. And I know, as I look at all of you, we're going to go past it. We might even set a new goal next year when I come here. So we will see what happens. So I want to thank all of you for your generosity, for the work that you have done. The campaign is in its quiet phase. That is why I'm saying that you cannot talk about it. And please don't. Um, sometime uh, in, this, in the fall, we shall make it public. We shall go public as a campaign uh, in tandem with our 125th uh, birthday celebration because we shall be 125 years old uh, later in the fall uh, this year. So it's an exciting time for all of us. We have launched the Renaissance of the Law School, and we have done so with your support. And I just want to thank you and pay my tribute to all the great men and women who are being honored tonight. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dean Matui. He does a wonderful job of leading us, but asking 300 lawyers to keep the secret, I don't know. <laughs> Let me turn it over to your president uh, in another month, Brian Melvin, right? Thank you, Rich. It's, uh, it's my pleasure to uh, recognize and extend the thanks of the Law Alumni Association uh, to all the individuals and organizations that helped make this night possible and who support the mission of the Law Alumni Association. First, we'd like to thank our table patrons, Connors and Villardo, Damon and Maury, Delaware North Companies, Hiscock and Barclay, Hodgson and Russ, Jekyll, Fleischman and Mugel, Cavanoke Cook, Lipsitz, Green, Chimay and Cabria, Lipsitz and Pontario, the Law Office of Moen and Killalay, Nixon Peabody, Phillips Lytle, Rich Products Corporation, and the UB Alumni Association. Thank you. The Law Alumni Association also gratefully acknowledges the generosity of the following underwriters who helped make this dinner possible. Their support uh, will, the proceeds of their support will benefit the activities and the mission of the Law Alumni Association and help us fulfill that mission. At the gold level, CTG, M&T Bank, and Paramount Settlement Planning, LLC. At the silver level, National Fuel and Rich Products Corporation. At the bronze level, the Bar Association of Erie County and West, a Thomson Reuters company. Please join me in thanking them. We'd also like to thank our sponsors and our, excuse me, our donors. Batavia Legal Printing, Brown and Kelly, Bergio Kita and Kerbin, Salino and Barnes, Chicago Title Insurance, Freed Maxic CPAs, Grover Cleveland Press, Carter Seacrest and Emery, Jack W. Hunt and Associates, The Law Office of Lindy Korn, LCS Inc., Lexus Nexus, Lippis Matthias Wexler Friedman, the Minority Bar Association of Western New York, Nesper, Ferber, and DiGiacomo, Nussbaumer and Clark Engineers and Land Surveyors, R.L. Sonnenberger Land Surveyors, Rupp, Boz, Falsgraf, Cunningham, and Coppola, Sterling United, the UB Alumni Association, and the Western New York Chapter of the Women's Bar Association of the State of New York. Thank you to you as well. We'd also like to express our gratitude to our two media sponsors. Those are the Daily Record and the Buffalo Law Journal. Uh, 
Uh, and now I'd like to uh, recognize the people who helped organize this event. First, our dinner co-chairs, Alan Bozer, Mary Pat Enright Fleming, and Brian Gwitt. And also the members of the dinner committee who worked with them to organize this event and make it all come off so beautifully. Scott Becker, Jim Grable, and Jeff Reyna. And of course, as always, in everything we do, we owe tremendous thanks to our executive director, Eileen Fleischman, and her wonderful staff in the Alumni Association office. Assistant Director Lisa Mueller, Assistant Gold Group Director Pat Warrington, Administrative Assistant Amy Hipnarowski, and Alumni Database Manager Cynthia Watts. Please thank them. And now I'd like to ask all of the current officers and directors of the Law Alumni Association and the Gold Group to please stand. Thank you. Now tonight we're proud to announce that uh, there will be some people joining the Law Alumni Association Board of Directors. The incoming directors for 2012-13 are Christopher Copeland, Michael Feely, Joseph Hanna, Ryan Mills, Stephanie Saunders, Kirsten Lowry Summers, and Linda Lolly Stark. Please welcome them. <laughs> Many of you know that one of the most vibrant and active parts of our organization is the Gold Group, the graduates of the last decade. They're also welcoming some new uh, incoming directors for the coming year. Those are Elizabeth Blasey Pennell, Frank Ewing, Kimberly, Kimberly Georger, and Seth Poland. Please welcome them as well. And finally, this year, there are uh, some alumni who are celebrating um, significant anniversaries of their graduation. Those are the class of 1952, who are celebrating their 60-year anniversary, and the class of 1962, celebrating their 50-year anniversary. A full list of names of those uh, alumni is in the program, and they'll all be receiving a, a certificate from the Law Alumni Association. Please congratulate them with me as well. And now we'll take a break while we enjoy our meal. Thank you. This is a special year for this awards dinner. This is the 50th awards dinner that this organization has, uh, has held. Established by the Law Alumni Association's Board of Directors, the Distinguished Alumni Awards recognize the valuable contributions that law school alumni have made to their profession and the community. In your dinner program, uh, which you each have at your place, there are acceptance remarks by all of our honorees. Uh, please take a look at those, they're really wonderful. Our first award will be presented by our immediate past president, Lori Steichelbloom, who will give the award for the judiciary. is a judge of the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania. She was appointed by President George W. Bush in 2002 and was unanimously affirmed by the U.S. Senate. That fact alone tells you a lot about Judge Ruth, as it is rare that the U.S. Senate agrees on anything, let alone unanimously. Prior to her appointment to the federal bench, Judge Ruth was a judge of the Court of Common Pleas of Bucks County, Pennsylvania. She graduated from Adelphia University in 1970 and our beloved law school in 1977. 
At Adelphia University, she served as co-president of the Student Association, president of Lantern, the senior women's honorary, class president, and received the Outstanding Senior Woman Award. As a law student at UB, she was the first woman to receive the Erie County Bar Association's Trial Lawyers Award for Excellence in Trial Advocacy. She received honors from her coursework, including her participation in the Buffalo Law Clinic. It was in the Buffalo Law Clinic that Judge Ruth got her first taste of working with the underrepresented and vulnerable elements of the legal system. She continued to work with criminal defendants, juvenile delinquents, abused, neglected, and delinquent children, and the mentally ill as a public defender in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. She also coordinated its juvenile division and served as deputy public defender, personally supervising the expansion of that office and training both legal and support staff, all while maintaining an active trial caseload. She credits the foundation she received in the Buffalo Law Clinic and her trial advocacy course, among others, for giving her the foundation to assume these challenging positions and the others that followed. And I just learned uh, earlier this evening that while a law student at uh, UB, Judge Ruth was not only a student, but a wife and a mother. And I thought it was tough just being a law student. In 1982, Judge Roof entered private practice, and again, she gravitated to those persons who needed her services the most, specializing in child abuse cases. She practiced civil and criminal litigation and family law. She was elected to the, straight, excuse me, the state trial court, court bench in 1993 and was appointed to the federal bench in 2002. Despite having a very demanding career, Judge Ruth nevertheless found time to volunteer her time and services on a wide variety of fronts. She is a former director of the Bucks County Bar Association and chaired its criminal law section, its bench bar and membership committees, and currently participates in the federal court section and the Lawyers Reaching Lawyers Committee. In 1988, she was appointed to a blue ribbon panel that established volunteer panels of attorneys to represent indigents in a variety of civil cases. She is a past member of the American Bar Association, the Pennsylvania Bar Association, the American Trial Lawyers Association, the Pennsylvania Trial Lawyers Association, the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, and the Pennsylvania Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. Currently, she sits on the ABA Commission on Civil Ed Civics Education schools. The Supreme Court of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania appointed Judge Roof to the Appellate Procedure Rules Committee, and she also served on the Education Committee of the Pennsylvania State Trial Judges Conference, where she was responsible for presenting educational programs to the state trial judges at their biennial conventions. Since her appointment to the federal bench, she has also sat by designation with the Third Circuit Court of Appeals. She has been appointed to lead the multi-district litigation for the diabetes drug Avantia and serves on the Third Circuit Court of Appeals Judicial Council Committee on Magistrate Judges. She represents her court as a director of the Federal Judges Association and sits on its executive committee. She's a member of the National Association of Women Judges, the Historical Society of the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, the Temple American Inn of Court, and the Justinian Society. She coordinated the publicity for the 2007 annual conference of the NAWJ and served as executive committee member and president of the Temple American Inn of Court in 2008-2009, which was awarded the Circle of Excellence distinction for that term. She continues her service to the Inn on the executive board. She has served as a faculty member of the TIPS National Trial Academy and regularly presents legal and ethics courses to litigation sections of the ABA, the Pennsylvania Bar Institute, state and local bar associations, as well as the Eastern District of Pennsylvania Outreach Programs. She recently participated in panels addressing multi-district and complex litigation, class actions, 
product liability, personal injury, patent, trademark, and copyright law, alternative dispute resolution, and employment law. She has been appointed to serve on numerous Eastern District Court committees and currently chairs the Court's Judicial Outreach and Public Relations Committee. Under Judge Ruth's direction, the Eastern District of Pennsylvania outreach efforts have earned recognition as models of court and law-related educational programs. Starting in 2006, she organized her colleagues to preside over mock trials and appellate arguments of 500 high school students from 50 high schools throughout the Delaware Valley. The Judicial Outreach Committee has partnered with the Administrative Office of the United States Courts, the Pennsylvania Bar Association, the Annenberg Institute for Civics, and the Annenberg Public Policy Center of the University of Pennsylvania, participating in video presentations of the Court's Law Day programs, which can be viewed at the United States Court's website as part of their interactive educational resources. Recently, she returned to UB Law to address the students in the Trial Advocacy Program, and along with her husband, who is also a judge, served as a judge for a national trial, mock trial competition being held here in Buffalo. She and her husband, John, have five daughters and six grandchildren. I don't know about you, but I'm tired just telling you about all that she has done. I don't know how she manages to do it all. She will have to let us in on her secret, which no doubt involves sleep deprivation. <laughs> but wait, there's more. She has also been an active member of several community agencies related to the improvement of youth, families, and protection from abuse, chemical addiction, and mental health, including the Board of Directors of Youth Services, Inc., Today, Inc., Reaching at Problems, Inc., Group Home and Prevention and Rehabilitation for Youth and Development, Inc., and was a founding member of the Organization to Prevent Teenage Suicide. The Schofield Ford Bridge Reconstruction Committee, which reconstructed a covered bridge in Tyler State Park using all volunteer labor and contributions from the community, was also spearheaded by the judge. She's a former member and past president of the, uh, I'm going to wing it here on the pronunciation, the Seroptimist International of Indian Rock, Inc., which is a service organization which has honored her as a woman of distinction. Last year, the Philadelphia Bar Association just selected Judge Roof as its recipient of the Sandra Day O'Connor Award, an honor conferred on women in the law who serve as role models and mentors in the legal profession. She was also honored by the Pennsylvania Commission for Social Justice, which presented her its Law and Justice Award for her outstanding contributions to the ideals of law and justice for all citizens. In 1999, she was awarded the M.J. Kirkpatrick Award for leadership in recognition of her work to end domestic violence, especially as it affects children. She has been selected for honors in four chaplains, Legion of Honor, the Outstanding Young Women of America, and at least eight Who's Who organizations, as well as the National Student Register. Please join me in congratulating Judge Cynthia Roof on receiving the very clearly well-deserved Judiciary Award. I don't know about you, but I need that. Presenting the award for private practice, I'm pleased to reintroduce Dean Macau Matua. Uh, you know, I'm tempted to just, you know, read what I was given, but I, um, you know, Mark is a very special individual. And I feel as though I can talk about him forever without a script. Um, you know, if you think about Mark Tsumoto, who is a recipient for this award for private practice, you cannot imagine a human being for whom the mission and the vision 
of our law school fits the most. He truly exemplifies the best of our law school. Uh, as a lawyer, Mark has built a career that is pioneering. He was our first graduate to find success in the legal uh, world in uh, California. Uh, when he graduated in 1982, he set out for the West Coast and he found success out in the West uh, as a member of a major, major law firm, uh, Pillsbury, Madison, and Sutro. Um, we have never had an alarm from UB achieve that kind of success on the West Coast before Mark did it. Um, following that experience, which was uh, remarkable in itself, he spent uh, 10 years um, building his own law firm, um, and then merging his own law firm with a national law firm, uh, McGuire Woods, that many of you, uh, I think, are aware of. And then, as if that was not enough, he reinvented his practice yet again by joining with two partners to form Van Eaton, Suzumoto, and Cipro with offices in two uh, prime locations in California. Uh, this is Westlake Village and LA. Um, in this new farm, uh, uh, Mark brings uh, more than um, two decades, almost three decades of legal and litigation experience uh, uh, to a practice that concentrates on consumer product counseling and regulatory compliance with particular emphasis and expertise in intellectual property, product liability, and trade regulation issues. Mark is very comfortable in LA. I happened to uh, visit the city last year with a number of my development uh, and uh, alumni uh, personnel from the law school. And he just drove us through Hollywood as though nothing was you know, uh, happening there. Uh, quite remarkable. Um, Mark's peers have awarded him the AV preeminent rating, indicating the highest level of professionalism and ethical standards. And in Southern California, he's been named a super lawyer uh, for the last um, uh, five years. But, you know, there's something that's special about Mark, and that's what I really wanted to talk about. It is that Mark, you know, is a human's human. And, you know, I mean that in his most uh, profound way I can say it. He's a human's human. He is the best in all of us put together. People who have worked with Mark, whether on the opposing side, whether they are judges, uh, whether they are clients, they call him a character guy. A character guy, uh, yeah, this is a, uh, uh, Buffalo is a football uh, city. A character guy is supposed to describe a person who never takes a playoff. Plays every time and plays it like that down was the last. They say that you will never find a more hard-working lawyer than Mark. Uh, but these values that Mark exemplifies were evident when he came to Buffalo. I wish that the law school could take credit, but we cannot. Uh, as an undergraduate at UCLA Davis, 
Mark joined the VISTA program and served as a volunteer in rural Iowa and Missoula. Uh, it was while he was recruiting uh, volunteers uh, for VISTA and the Peace Corps in upstate New York that he realized that a law degree might be useful. And hence, he applied to Harvard Law School. And guess what? He was talked into applying to the law school by one Alan Carroll. Where is Alan? Alan is someone over there. Alan Carroll, you all know him. Um, his partner, this is Mark's uh, partner in the current law firm who has worked with him shoulder to shoulder. This is uh, Keith Shippero. Um, this press Mark um, as a lawyer's lawyer, as a person who, as a lawyer who will never put the interests of the firm, which is remarkable in itself, or his own interest before the interest of the client. And I just want, uh, you know, the young lawyers in the, in, in the room and those who are not graduated who are here to hear that. He puts the clients first, not the firm and not himself. That is a nobility of our profession that's been lost. Um, clients, you know, Mark's partner says, never are concerned about what Mark will do. They know that he will do what is best uh, for them. Mark is also a lit litigant, a litigator's litigator. He gets results for the clients without bluster. Just the brains. Careful analysis, impeccable preparation, gentle persuasion. And I think all of you who know Mark know this. He, when you Look, when you face Mark, it's like you are facing the Buddha. You know, I, I quite often feel very inferior in front of Mark, morally inferior in front of Mark, and I say, you know, please let some of you rub on me, you know. Um, I, I can say this because uh, Mark has been a member of the Dean's Advisory Council. And, um, you know, that council advises the Dean on many things. I can say that Mark's influence on me and my deanship has been profound. He's taught me how to be humble. He's taught me how to listen. He's taught me how to hear criticism. But he's also, which is not insubstantial, given me his treasured resources um, in many ways. When you know, Mark lives in California. It is not easy to travel across the country. It's a continent away to come to come in Buffalo. But Mark flies often and frequently to Buffalo to counsel our students, to be at dark meetings. You know, I, I you know, I think the dark members know that Mark is always there at every dark meeting whether it's in Washington, in New York City, in Buffalo, Mark is going to be there. He counsels our students. He helps them get jobs. He sits on the steering committee of the law school campaign committee that I've talked about, which is designed to secure the future of our law school. He's generous. And I just want to thank him and his family. He is a model citizen of the country, he is a model citizen of the university, and he is a model citizen of the law school. And his model is one that I think we all should emulate. Finally, uh, you know, Mark is also very active in support of the Boy Scouts of America. It's, it's, that's a lost organization. We don't talk about it often, but we all know the good that the Boy Scouts do, uh, and the Girl Scouts as well. 
but he is very active there. He and Sonia, Sonia is here with us. Sonia, where are you? Can you stand up and get a round of applause? Thank you, Sonia. Sonia is actually from uh, Western New York. They met when uh, I think Mark was recruiting for the, uh, the Peace Corps and the VISTA program. If I'm not wrong about that. Um, they have two, they have three grown sons, and all three of their sons have achieved the rank of Eagle Scout in the Boy Scouts of America. Ladies and gentlemen, as dean of the law school, I cannot be more proud to present this award uh, for the distinction alumnus for private practice than to Mark Suzumoto. Mark. Officers, um, happy to say my classmate Jim Brabel will present the award for community <coughs> service. Thank you, Brian. Our Alumni Association awards the Community Service Award to a lawyer who enhances the image and reputation of our profession, demonstrates devoted service to charitable and community organizations and enjoys the respect and admiration of fellow practitioners and members of the public. As the name of the award suggests, it goes to a lawyer whose service has made our community a better place. I'm very proud tonight to present the Alumni Association's 2012 Community Service Award to a most deserving recipient, my partner and my friend, Vince Doyle. I can't think of a better way to uh, enhance the image and reputation of our law school and our profession. And I can't think of a better way for a lawyer to improve his or her community than by tireless efforts to serve the underserved, represent the unrepresented, and remember the sometimes forgotten participants in our justice system. Vince, a 1989 graduate of our law school, and current president of the New York State Bar Association, dedicated his presidency and stewardship of our State Bar Association to the theme, Justice for All. Vince chose this theme because it's so near and dear to his heart and so faithful to the example he learned from his parents. His mother, Joan, who's with us here tonight, please give her a round of applause. and his father, a fellow SUNY Buffalo Law Distinguished Alumnus, Judge Vincent Doyle, Jr. And I, I want to make sure I mention tonight that two of Vince's aunts are with us all the way from Wales uh, to join us for the dinner tonight. Um, and we really appreciate that you made the trip. <laughs> Justice for All wasn't just a theme that Vince picked. It was a rally to action and a reminder of the good that all of us as lawyers can accomplish with the education we receive from our law school. And Vince is leading the charge. He's doing it with initiatives that have expanded legal services for veterans, immigrants, and the poor. And he's doing so at a time when, when fiscal belt tightening has made it especially important to come up with creative ways for all of us to work to provide legal services to those who need them most but can afford them least. Vince has made it his mission as president, and he's made it the mission of our state bar to make a difference for those most in need. And, and his contributions are too numerous to list, but I want to list just a few that relate to this mission that Vince adopted. He, he's been in the state bar for over two decades, including five years on the executive committee and nine years in the House of Delegates. He served as chair of the State Bar's criminal justice section 
and the Committee to Ensure Equality, uh, equality of Mandated Representation. He served on the Bar Association's Task Force on Wrongful Convictions. And during his State Bar Presidency, Vince worked with the Innocence Project and lawmakers to push for reforms to prevent wrongful convictions. Vince has also chaired the um, Task Force to Review Terrorism le Legislation and he served on the Advisory Committee on Criminal Law and Procedure, Procedure, Committee on Legislative Policy, and the Commission on the Tort System. And he's a fellow of the New York Bar Foundation, our former Chief Judge of the New York State Court of Appeals, Chief Judge Judith Kaye, appointed Vince to the Commission on the Jury, which improved our jury system with a series of recommendations that have changed the way juries perform their work in New York State. Vince is a former member of the Board of Directors of the Erie County Bar Association here in our own county, and he's a past president of the, county's, uh, the county bar's Aid to Indigent Prisoner Society, which we know administers the assigned counsel program here in Erie County. And uh, he's an honors graduate of our law school, and he's a former director of this alumni association. Vince uh, manages to pull off all these contributions to our community and our profession while also uh, conducting a busy litigation practice. His skills as a trial lawyer and as a courtroom advocate are reflected in his recogni recognition as a fellow into the American College of Trial Lawyers. But Vince's greatest joy is his family, of course, and his lovely wife, Carrie, is with us here tonight. Um, and Vince has three beautiful children who are in our office on weekends uh, who join us for work, Aiden, Blaze, and Isabella, um, Vince has included them in his Bar Association activities just as his father brought him to Bar Association activities when Vince was a child. And Vince is uh, planting those same seeds in his children that his father planted in him that have us recognizing Vince and his contributions here tonight. And I suspect that in a few years we'll be honoring the contributions of a third generation of Doyles. In the meantime, Vince, uh, we thank you for your tireless efforts to serve us, our community, and our profession. Your work has elevated our law firm, it's elevated our law school, and it's elevated our alumni association to new heights. And it gives me great joy to award you the 2012 Community Service Award. Presenting the award for public service, Mary Pat Enright Fleming. Good evening. Um, United States Attorney William J. Hochul Jr. is the recipient of the Public Service Award. Bill is a tireless and energetic public servant who has dedicated himself to improving the safety and well-being of the Western New York community. As the United States Attorney for the Western District of New York, Bill is responsible for overseeing the prosecution of any federal criminal case brought in the uh, 17 counties of Western New York. The office also represents the United States in all civil matters brought within the territory. President Obama uh, nominated Bill for this position in 2009 and the Senate confirmed unanimously, just like the judge, in 2010. Bill was born in Buffalo and was the youngest of three children, and is, um, is the youngest of three children. Bill's two older sisters are both dedicated public servants as well. Denise is here today, and she's an attorney with the Department of Homeland Security. Um, Bill's father worked several jobs to support the family most notably at the Kittinger Furniture Company and later at M&T Bank. And his mother raised the children and later worked evenings as a medical records technician. Bill's parents um, instilled in him at an early age the benefits of hard work and commitment to the greater good. 
He attended public school in Cheektowaga and um, is a proud member of the Cheektowaga Central Wall of Fame for his academic successes and community involvement. Bill graduated cum laude from uni the University of Notre Dame in 1981 and earned his law degree from UV in 1984. Among his law school accomplishments, Bill was the head of the Moot Court Board and in 1982 won the Best Oralist Award at the National Constitutional Law Moot Court Competition held in North Carolina. Bill began his legal career in the Washington, D.C. area as a law clerk to a Maryland Court of Appeals judge. At the conclusion of, his, of this appointment, he joined the litigation section at the Washington office of a large international law firm where, where he represented a wide variety of clients in complex civil litigation matters, including racketeering and fraud-related lawsuits. Bill joined the Department of Justice in 1987 as an assistant United States Attorney for the District of Columbia. While in Washington, he prosecuted an extensive array of violent and white-collar uh, criminal cases and later uh, specialized in the prosecution of first-degree and gang-related murder cases. Bill joined uh, the United States Attorney's Office for the Western District of New York, um, my current office, or our current office, his current office, in 1991. In this capacity, um, he prosecuted a large number of cases involving notorious, violent, and white-collar criminals, racketeering and other complex schemes, and multiple cases targeting violent street gangs and emerging international organized crime groups. Bill became the chief of the office's anti-terrorism unit following September 11, and in 2006, he became the chief of the National Security Division. Bill served as lead prosecutor in several high-profile international terrorism cases. This included the prosecution of the so-called Lackawanna Six, the first known instance of Americans training with Al-Qaeda, for which Bill and others received the Department of Justice's highest honor, the Attorney General's Award for Exceptional Service. The United States Attorney's Office under Bill's tenure has focused its efforts on protecting our community. Numerous high-profile cases have been brought, such as RICO cases involving prosecutions of the 7th Street and 10th Street gangs, which rid the streets of drugs, guns, and violence, as well as Project Safe Childhood cases, human trafficking cases, protecting children from online predators, and financial identity fraud cases. Bill um, frequently speaks domestically and abroad to law enforcement groups, attorneys, and judges on matters relating to investigating and prosecuting organized crime, gang, terrorism, and money laundering offenses. He served, as, he served as an adjunct professor at UB Law School, where he taught trial technique. At Niagara University, he taught courses on terrorism, and at Hilbert College, he taught a terrorism homeland security course. Bill's community outreach is unparalleled as well. Bill is actively involved in Bridges, which is a group that fosters positive relationships between the Muslim community and law enforcement. As recently as Tuesday of this week, Bill participated in a public forum with representatives of the Muslim community and law enforcement to discuss the issues surrounding the New York Police Department's surveillance of Muslim students. He sponsored a prescription drug abuse Senate, um, summit in October of 2011, which brought together 500 people from the education, medical, and law enforcement communities to tackle the problem. Under Bill's watch, he worked with the United States District Court uh, judges to establish the first federal veterans court, whereby certain veterans are eligible to have their cases diverted to the local Buffalo Veterans Court, where they receive treatment and services. Success successful completion results in the dismissal of federal charges. Bill continues the office's work on Project Exile, working with law enforcement and community groups to battle violence in our community. Bill um, also spearheaded the Intelligence Summit for Law Enforcement, which brought together law enforcement agencies from the 17 counties of the Western District, District of New York to discuss crime problems. An another, um, uh, 
initiative um, in, of our offices. We seek to donate forfeited properties involved in crime to deserving community groups. To that end, Bill took part in a mortgage burning ceremony for the Hananiah Lutheran Ministries property, which was a former sophisticated marijuana grow operation that was forfeited, turned into a community center, and now is owned outright by the organization. The office also donated a former uh, city drug house that was forfeited by the office to the organization It Takes a Village, which provides services to women in need. And another property was donated um, to Habitat for Humanity, um, who, which fixed it up and gave it to a family. Bill's outside interests include spending time with his family and martial arts, which is a little scary for me. Black, Bill is a black belt and has become an instructor in martial arts, which has certainly enhanced his leadership skills at the office. <laughs> Bill is married to United States Congresswoman Kathy Hochul, who was introduced previous, previously and is the proud father of two children, William III, who's in law school, and Caitlin, who's working in the Washington, D.C. area. <coughs> Bill has stated one of the most rewarding aspects of this job is meeting with ordinary citizens and community groups and targeting resources where they can best be used. People need to know, people need to know someone will stand up for them when they've been wronged. My commitment to the community is that our entire staff will do just that each and every day. So please join me in congratulating Bill Hochul as the worthy recipient of the public. Now presenting the award for Business Achievement, Brian Gwynn. Well, it's my honor to give the 2012 Award for Business Achievement to Jill Bond. Uh, the criteria for this award are a person who demonstrates strong leadership skills in business or corporate legal affairs, knowledgeable in dealing with attorneys, courteous and tactful, which is odd for an attorney to have those skills, honest and trustworthy, diligent and prompt, and someone who enhances their image through business. Uh, Jill's a Canisius College graduate. She's a 1985 graduate of UB Law School. Uh, after law school, she started at Hurwitz and Fine and worked about three years before taking a job in 1988 at Rich Products. She started as corporate counsel, and then after just eight, eight years, moved on to be vice president and general counsel. I don't know if I mentioned, Rich Products is a $2.8 billion global company, so to become general counsel within just eight years to me is a fairly fantastic accomplishment. Uh, she's been in that position since 1996 and taken on a number of different roles since, from vice president to senior vice president, uh, to Chief Compliance Officer, uh, to uh, her current position as Senior Vice President, General Counsel, Chief Compliance Officer, Associate Services, and Total Rewards. Uh, I've talked with some people she's worked with, and she's handled her success with grace and humility, uh, which is a wonderful, wonderful trait to have. Uh, setting aside her terrific accomplishments in business, she's done a number of different things for the community. Uh, currently, she serves as, on the Board of Directors of the Women's Food Service Forum, the Board of Regents for Canisius College, the Board of Directors for the Volunteer Lawyers Project, the Board of Directors for Legal Services for the Elderly, Disabled, and Disadvantaged, and a legal committee member for the Grocery Manufacturers Association. Uh, previously, she served on the Dean's Advisory Council, the Board of Directors of the Bar Association of Erie County, the Board of Directors of the Clarkson Center, the Board of Directors of the Aquarium of Niagara, the Board of Directors of Sister Sister Connection, the Board of Directors of Westminster Early Childhood Programs, and the Board of Directors of the Women's Bar Association of Western New York. 
Uh, Jill has also run Rich Products United Way campaign, served on the Buffalo Niagara Business Ethics Association, and been awarded the YMCA Leadership Award and Business First 40 Under 40. I can't think of many things she hasn't done or been awarded at this point. Uh, Jill's mom is with us here tonight. She certainly thanked her mom and her remarks for giving her the wonderful opportunity she had. Uh, as far as the law school, the law school gave Jill her greatest gift, and, and she asked me to have him stand Keith. She met in law school. <laughs> These are all wonderful accomplishments. I, I'm, I was, I'm honored to be up here to summarize them. A wise person said, Brian, you don't need to say any of that. Just stand up there and say, Jill Bond rules. <laughs> <laughs> With that said, I'd like to award the 2012 Business Achievement Award to Jill Bond. Each year, this Alumni Association gives an award for service to the university and the community by a non-alumnus. And uh, this year, our, our president, Rich DiGiacomo, will present that award. Thanks, Brian. Uh, I'm delighted to be able to present this year's 2012 non-alumnus UB Law Alumni Association Award to Michael S. Harry. Mike graduated from Canisius College, then graduated from the University of the Pacific, McGeorge School of Law. We're fortunate, though, he came back to Western New York. Uh, those of you who are Canisius College alums might have noticed in the last Canisius magazine that you got either online or in paper form, a great article on Mike and the work he's done at the St. Luke's Mission, uh, mission on Buffalo's East Side. If you look at Mike's very humble acceptance remarks, Mike mentions only his volunteering at St. Luke's Mission, his volunteering at Our Lady of Hope School, the school that's associated with the mission, his teaching at UB Law School, his presence and his former students. He doesn't mention any achievements that he's achieved as a practicing lawyer. He's well recognized as one of the finest criminal lawyers in our community, and he's been consistently named to publications like Best Lawyers in America, Who's Who in the Law, and other similar publications, for his practice in the area of criminal law. He also doesn't mention his, his remarks at all about his authorship of several books, articles, publications on the subject of criminal law with especially in DWI cases. However, as most practicing lawyers like me know, know who don't really practice in criminal law, when you get that call from a client with a DWI or an alcohol-related offense, one of the names right at the top of your list to refer your client to is Mike Tahari. But over the past few years, Mike has had another focus in addition to his legal practice. And this is his mission work, his work at St. Luke's Mission and Our Lady of Hope School. The mission and its school are located on the east side of Buffalo in one of the poorest areas. It's an area of high unemployment, of high crime, but nonetheless, Mike calls this his second home. He spends a tremendous amount of time there and he's dedicated to helping young people and further their education. He spends his time assisting the school teaching elementary, high school, and college students, helping them prepare for a career. Mike and his wife, Josette, have brought some of those students with them here tonight, and we're glad that you have come to help us honor Mike. Mike and Josette would also like to invite you to St. Luke's Mission and to Our Lady of Hope School to see the great work that they're performing. They're always in need of help, financial help, help for tutors, all kinds of support. They offer you the invitation to go see what wonderful work they're doing. As I mentioned, in the area of awards, Mike has received many. But this award tonight is especially noteworthy, I believe, because Mike's an example to all of us, an example to all of us lawyers, of how a busy, well-recognized, excellent, and successful lawyer can devote a major part of his life to a not-for-profit cause, the cause of helping a number of underprivileged young people on Buffalo's east side. The award shows all of us that it is possible, in addition to assisting our clients, to find a way to help people in need. Throughout history, mankind has recognized how important it is to give. One of my favorite quotes, and it's a quote you've all heard, very early quote, credited to Aristotle before 300 BC. 
The quote is, the good man thinks it is more blessed to give than to receive. Mike is one of the most giving people I've ever met, and he's truly one of those good men that Aristotle foresaw. He's made a tremendous difference in the lives of these children. Therefore, I'm honored to present the UB Law Alumni Association 2011 Non-Alumnus Award to Mike Dare. Thank you all for sharing this evening with us. Thank you for all of you for everything that you do for the Alumni Association and for the law school. Please join me one more time in, in recognizing all of our award recipients. We're adjourned.